Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Mugerwa Jeremiah, a teacher and an author of uh, African history. Uh, I've come here on Delta TV so that we can discuss some pertinent issues as far as African history is concerned. Uh, the nature of the paper that I'm going to handle uh, runs uh, between 1855 to 1914. So anything that is beyond that period is none of our business and therefore to our learners, what does it mean? It means that every aspect that you're going to handle, all the illustrations and examples that you're going to give in that paper should run between 1855 to 1914. The paper is also known as History Paper 6. The paper code is P210-6. stroke As I've already uh, informed you earlier, uh, Jeremiah Mgera is my name, a teacher and an author of African history, and I happen to teach uh, in Mengo Senior School and King's College Budo. Now, our pertinent topic that we want to address uh, this morning is a topic that I know all of us are so much interested in answering the question about, and our topic will be scramble and partition of Africa. Scramble and partition of Africa. When you talk about this, of course, learners happen to have a lot of information uh, as far as the topic is concerned. And indeed, I know almost everybody who is listening and viewing us there has an idea as far as the topic is concerned. Now, when we talk about scramble and partition of Africa, this happened in the 19th century, or if we are to go by the time frame, we can say in the period between or after 1870s. So we are right to say that the period in question that we're going to address is around 1880s. Because before 1870, we did not have a scramble and partition of Africa. Then, at times, I always question my learners, is there a difference between scramble and partition as and colonization of Africa. And I always imagine and believe that these two aspects are a set or a subset of colonization. Scramble and partition, if we are to take by definition, scramble was the rush. Scramble was the rush by the European powers to take over colonies in Africa. And of course, you are saying this rush happened in the 19th, in the 19th century. And of course, there were quite a number of European powers that participated in this rush. We can make a mention of some of the European powers, the key players in this aspect. We had Britain, we had France, there was Germany that eventually participated in this, more so after the calling of the Berlin Conference of 1884. Eventually, other powers like Italy also joined after unification, okay? We had other smaller powers um, like Portugal, which also participated. And of course, others, other players like Denmark, like Norway, and so on and so forth. So, that rush was encompassing all these European powers. What about the partition? The partition was actually the actual dividing or divisionism of, of the African territories among the European powers. So you can imagine. Now, having known what scramble was about, the rush, hmm, I would give a very good example. It's like we are in the period of uh, quarantine and the government has a project of giving food eh, to those who are in need of it. You can imagine the rush that is going to take, to take place in different areas of the country, rushing for food. But of course, it has been the responsibility of the government to ensure that each and every homestead benefits from the project. And therefore, the government has a partition. Okay? How much should be acquired or should be given to each homestead? So, that is it. It's like having something to eat. I always give reference to a cake. A cake is something that can be divided into small portions. So as to make sure that each and every person participates in it. Now, 
We are going to be guided by a question. We have a question at hand. Account. Account. For the colonization. For the colonization. Colonization. Of Africa. Colonization of Africa. By the 19th century. By the 19th. 19th century having known having known what scrum and partition was all about colonization was the eventual takeover of the african territories amongst or by the european powers we've already known the players that participated now account for the colonization of africa we are beginning from known to unknown we are beginning with simple and direct questions and then eventually we'll go to more complicated and complex questions. And indeed it is deliberate so that we can follow our discussion. Now, account for the colonization of Africa. When you look at the nature of this question, it falls under the category and example of a direct question. Account for simply means give reasons why this episode, colonization, the takeover of colonies by the European powers took place. And indeed, it is always important for us to earmark the key words in the question. And the key words should be in position to guide us on how we are supposed to approach the question. We have account for. Account for should be underlined. Another key player in the question is colonization because it is the topic where the question is being derived from. And we have 19th century and Africa. The moment you earmark and underline the keywords in the question, it will be easy for you to understand what the question requires. Now, we've said account for simply means give reasons. Give reasons. Don't forget the nature of the level that we are handling is A level, advanced level. It is not all level style. So give reasons why colonization took place. Now, a brilliant and well-organized candidate ready to sit for his or her exams in November or any other month, as we we'll know, should be in position to identify the key ones in the question, okay? And before you begin, you make sure that you plan. You plan for your work. And in this plan, I expect you to highlight and list the points that you're going to give us, which you're going to present in the actual presentation on paper or what you'd refer to as your essay. Now, it is a direct question, as we've already noted. This question does not require a standpoint. However, I'll later inform you that when you're concluding, you can incline on a particular set of factors that led to the colonization, and it will be within your means to appreciate or exonerate and indeed inform the examiner that according to you, much as the colonization of Africa was a multiplicity of so many factors, to you, you've identified a particular set of factors that made colonization inevitable. Now, you should know that you, a good essay of a level history is divided into three. We have an introduction. We have, that is introduction. We have the body as well as the conclusion. Body and the conclusion. Now, your introduction should be determined depending on the nature of the set question. Now we have account for. I will eventually show you how you're supposed to introduce your work. Then the body are the answers. Answers to the set question. And I expect you to present these answers in a paragraph form. You present in a paragraph form. Okay? In a, a good paragraph, not block system, but in a paragraph form. And of course, eventually, you conclude. When you conclude, you sum up. You sum up what you've presented. A conclusion is a personal judgment of one's presentation. And therefore, we don't mind about 
whether you have the same conclusions or not. In fact, our dear viewers and listeners, feel free to even have a different conclusion from what your teacher presented. There is no wrong conclusion as long as it is summing up and indeed it is climaxing whatever you presented in the body. Now, how would a viable and acceptable introduction look like? Now, you would begin by telling us what colonization was all about in your introduction. And if I were you, I would say colonization was the process by which European powers took over African territories during the period of the scramble for and partition of Africa. It should be noted that the scramble was the rush by the European powers to take over colonies. Amongst the outstanding, and take my word, I'm using the word outstanding. Literally, it will mean that you may not um, give us all the examples of the European countries that participated in the process. But I'm using the word outstanding countries that participated in the colonization included, you make a list, Britain, comma, France, we had Leopold II of Belgium, we had the Portuguese, we had the Italians, and so on and so forth. All of these key players came to Africa in the 19th century in order to take over colonies. Full stop. Now I create another paragraph. I started by defining what colonization was all about. I've got an extra mile to show the, 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 the countries, the European powers, the key players that participated in the colonization. And now I want to go to the gist of the question, which is account for give reasons. I would create another paragraph because it is non satanic for you to, go, to introduce your work in more than one paragraph. I would go to the question by saying the factors that led to the colonization of Africa were varied. They were a combination of political, they were social, they were economic, they were strategic or otherwise. These factors can also be regarded as the push and pull factors. Push and pull factors being determined by the situation that was in Europe and others being determined by the circumstances that prevailed in Africa. Whatever the case, colonialism took place and you should incline to the word that is being used in the question and that is colonization, okay? So we can even guide and say, indeed, in summary, these factors were both internal and external, okay? And can be explained as below. That is another second paragraph. Remember, with our history at a level, marking is purely by impression. So, you are now beginning to impress. You started by giving me the preamble and the background of what colonialism was all about. You've gone an extra mile to give us the preamble of the factors that appeal to colonization by summing them up, by telling us that they were varied. Varied simply means there were many. That they were political, that they were social, that they were uh, economic, that they were strategic, or otherwise. When I say otherwise, there are those factors that you cannot classify under the political, social, economic, or strategic factors, but are also acceptable and indeed valid to explain why colonialism took place. And then thereafter, the onus is on you to begin with whatever factor. And then you can present these factors in a turbulent manner. It is okay, even if you mix them up, because after all, you've given an impression in the background, in your introduction, that you are aware these factors can be classified into so many uh, classifications, okay? Now, because we said it is a direct question, it does not require a standpoint. And for that matter, I'm saying when you go to the body, I'll just be giving you a sample of some of these factors, okay? So, of course, if we are to classify political factors, though I've said it is okay, you may not classify when you're presenting in the body. Under political factors, we can talk about Unification of European powers. Unification of European powers. Of course, here, focus is Germany and Italy. 
of course, in your paper three in European history, you've already studied senior sixes that the unification of these two countries had been accomplished by 1870. Uh huh. You can go ahead and talk about rise of nationalism, rise of nationalism, which was, of course, directly as a result of the unification of the European powers. You'll give, you'll use the example of German and Italy. Then we'll talk about the Berlin Congress. The Berlin Congress of 1878. Members are always uh, used to the one of 1884-85. That one was a conference. This is a congress. This one has been called by Otto von Bismarck in order to sort out problems and challenges that had cropped up among the European powers in line with sorting out the problems that had been created as a result of the weakness and decline of Turkey, which then had been regarded as the sick man of Europe. So Bismarck used this opportunity to try and divert the ambitions of France from putting up a revengeful war against Germany in order to recapture Alsace and Lorraine. So with this Berlin Congress, uh, Bismarck forced other European powers to recognize the French interests in Tunisia, which Tunisia actually was annexed by the French eventually after the Krumah's attack. I know your teachers will be in position to take you through the history of the Maghreb region. And you know that Tunisia uh, lost its independence in 1881 after the signing of the Treaty of Bado and Treaty of El Massa. Okay, so Tunisia was annexed. Okay, uh-huh. Then we'll talk about the Franco-Prussian War. Franco-Prussian War. Okay, Franco-Prussian War. This one took place 1870 to 71. You know what happened then? Okay, a senior student should be in position to know what happened during the Franco-Prussian War. It was, was, of course, a war between France and Prussia. And, of course, Prussia, an underdog, upset France. Okay, before this war, the French had been known as the masters over the land. But they were given um, a shocker. Mm, by Prussia, mm, which Prussia eventually became Germany after the unification. Prussia defeated the French, and of course, as a sign of defeat, the French lost Alsace and Lorraine. And these were important, uh, potential economic areas. Potential economic areas. And on, indeed, with the defeat of the French, it was an embarrassment, it was a humiliation. And of course, with that humiliation, the French had to prove a point. You know, then, the more colonies one attained, the more powerful and prestigious. So the French, who had been a superpower as far as fighting on land was concerned, being defeated by Prussia and underdog, it was an embarrassment, it was a humiliation. And the French had to rub away the humiliation and embarrassment by going elsewhere to seek for allies, too, by going elsewhere to acquire more territories as a way of compensating for the loss of Alsace and, Alsace and Lorraine. Then... We can talk about the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85. Of course, this one was called by Otto von Bismarck. Okay, it was called by Otto von Bismarck. And indeed, um, Bismarck wanted to legalize colonization. And he wanted to sort out problems and challenges that had developed and disputes that had developed among the European powers as far as colonization was concerned. And indeed, uh, Bismarck legalized colonization using the Peace of 1884, but of course also later he used it as a stepping stone to show a uh, case for Germany as far as change in attitude of colonization was concerned. Uh -huh. and, and so on and so forth. There are so many other economic factors. So